ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وأرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد صل الله وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأنصياء والصديقين وعتوة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والخلص من أصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم حسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم فليعلمن الله الذين صدقوا وليعلمن الكاذبين صدق الله العلي العظيم All divine messages and scriptures they came down to mankind so people would embrace them and accept them and believe in them and follow them. It was not intended to impose these messages on people. It was not intended to force people to accept these messages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the people to happily accept these messages and these books out of their own understanding, out of their own conviction, because there is no value in, in, in a faith that you don't believe in it. There is no value. There is no value following a faith or a school of thought that you don't understand it. There is no value. And probably there is no reward in that too. Faith, any faith, or the school of thought, the madhab, has to be understood and has to be loved and embraced and followed. Therefore Allah says in many places in his book, لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي We don't force people to follow. Why? Because the right path is obvious and the wrong path is obvious too. But tabayyan, we have distinguished, we make them distinct from one another. The right path is very obvious, people know it, this is the right path. The ghay, the wrong path is also very obvious. So we don't force people to follow, we want them to use their brain and their reason. We do not want them to follow by force, neither we want them to follow blindly out of sheer emotions. We need them to use their brain in following their faith. وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Allah is saying the truth. If you want to accept the truth, أَهْلًا وَسَهْلًا You are most welcome. And if you want to reject the truth, also ahlan wa sahlan, but you have to pay the price. There is a price for it. Your rejection has a 
price. And you will see the price on that day. Therefore, Iman and faith has two ways and two connectors and two parts. One of them is Allah desires to guide people, to save people, to teach them. The desire of God, the will of God. No one came to religion by accident. No one. You may go to a restaurant by accident, to the beach by accident, to the movie theater by accident, to the party, but not to mosque. Going to the mosque is by design, not by accident. It's by invitation. Coming to religion is by invitation only. By invitation only. By the invitation that comes from God for some reasons. Sometimes we don't know the reasons. God invites this brother, but he does not invite his own brother in the same house. One of them goes to the masjid, to religion, to guidance, the other rejects. Why? What's the reason? We don't know. Sometimes the reason is hidden. Sometimes we know it, sometimes we don't know it. Asbab ghaybiyya. There are some reasons that are unseen. We don't see them, neither we understand them. But it is by invitation. When people go to religion, definitely it is by invitation from God. This is one part. One part of it by invitation. The second part, by our acceptance, we receive invitations, sometimes we decline. Sometimes we say, I accept, I push that bottle, I, I accept. Sometimes I decline. We receive invitations, some people do receive it from God. God sent the invitation, but some people they decline. So maybe someone says, why God sent an invitation to this, but he didn't send it to me? Allah says, I sent, I sent it to all of you. Some of you see it, you make note of it, like the emails that we receive. Sometimes an email that I like, I read it. Sometimes the one I like, I pretend that I have not seen it. It goes to the junk, junk me, because I don't like it. I don't like to open it. Sometimes this is how we treat God. Some people, they open his invitation, they take care of it, they respond to it. Some people, they send it somewhere else. They don't want to see it. So two parts for guidance. Guidance requires two elements. One, invitation from God. Second, acceptance from us. Willingness, inclination from us to accept this invitation. If we don't accept it, we cannot be guided. Allah Ta'ala يقول الإيمان والهداية لها طرفان طرفان دعوة مني وقبول من العبد it has two parts. Guidance has two parts. One, from me, I send the invitation. The second, acceptance and readiness and a preparedness from the servant has to accept and say, yes, I'm willing to come along. I'm willing to follow up, to follow what you are telling me. And therefore, some people ask why we have delay in the reappearance and the return of our 12th Imam, Al Imam Al Mahdi Ajalallahu Ta'ala Faraj. The main reason for his delay, because there is a condition. Allah has put a condition for the return of the Imam. Many conditions. The most important one, us being ready to receive him being ready to serve him, being ready to accept the truth and the justice that he brought and he will bring to the community, to worldwide. Some people are not ready. Some people say, the return of the Imam is too much for me. Too much. I'm not ready for that. It's a big responsibility for me. I can't take it. When the community cannot take it, it's not ready for it, the Imam is not going to waste his time. Neither God is going to waste his effort in sending him. Because God wants to send him when people are receiving him. 
cooperating with him, helping him. The Imam alone cannot do anything. He needs the community. All the prophets, Rasulullah, the best prophet, the best servant of God. In Mecca, he could not do anything. Because the community, the Meccans, they rejected him. 13 years in Mecca, but 10 years in Medina, shorter period. In Mecca, he could not do anything. Allah said to him, leave Mecca. That's it, leave. You did 13 years here, don't waste your time anymore. Go to a community, to a fertile land, a community that understands you, respects you, is willing to cooperate with you, is willing to accept you, it's ready to accept you and sacrifice for you. Allah gave him permission to leave Mecca to Medina. In Medina, he was able to establish his masjid. In Mecca, he could not establish a masjid. He could not give a lecture. He could not preach. As I mentioned last night, the answer was rocking him, throwing rocks at the Prophet. Same thing with other Prophets. Nuh alayhi salam. Qala ruh Nuhun rabbi innahum ad asawni. They disobeyed me. They rejected me. وَاتَّبَعُوا مَنْ لَمْ يَزِدْهُ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا خَسَارًا They followed someone that his children and his wealth never increased him, but in misguidance. They followed the people of dunya. They left me alone. They rejected me. He could not do anything. Nuh worked very hard. He was not lazy. 950 years, according to the Quran. But they did not respond to him. So the invitation came from God, but the acceptance did not come from them. The same thing we have with our last Imam, Al Imam Al Mahdi, Ajalallahu Ta'ala Faraj. The most important condition for his reappearance is us, our readiness, istadat. Are we ready? Because it's not a joke. The state of the Imam, the government of the Imam is serious government, requires men, men who are committed to justice, to truth. Men who are committed to follow the instructions of God. Men who are not hypocrites anymore. Men and women who do not think of their own narrow interests and put their interests above others. Such people do not help the Imam. Allah waits for the moment that we say, Ilahi, we are ready. Where is this? This is in the Quran. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. You change yourself, we change the conditions. We change your state. You begin. You initiate the change yourself. And according to the ahadith, one of the reasons that delays the reappearance of the imam, dhunubuna wa a'maluna, our sins, our misbehavior, our misconduct, our suspicion of each other, our unwillingness to cooperate with each other, to respect each other, to help each other, to help our communities. This is one of the reasons that the Imam has been delayed. When we are ready to accept the truth and change ourselves, some people think it's only through dua. Dua alone does not work. Dua has to be always joined with amal. At dua wal amal. At dua wal amal. Always. Dua is an act of heart. It comes from your heart and your mouth. But then your lips has to follow, has to match the heart. If the lips do not match the heart, this dua is useless, does not work. We have to change ourselves, our characters, our personalities, our families. We have to work hard on changing our families, preparing them, being the real soldiers of Islam being ready to receive the Imam. If Imam comes to our communities, I ask this question. If he comes to our homes, if we want to host him, would he be happy when he enters our homes? Our homes are Islamic environment. He would be happy. He would be glad. He would say, Alhamdulillah, you did well. You, your wife, your children, your daughter is good. Your son is good. 
Your house is good. Your community is good. Our masajid are really, they can receive him in good condition, good moral, not just physical, moral condition. We help each other. In our community, we help each other. We come to the rescue of each other. We have to ask this question. If we think, yes, we are ready, Allah will send him. But we have a long way to go. A long way to go. Allah says we give this last government only to the righteous because there is no room for corrupt people anymore. The world is fed up with corrupt. The righteous, only the righteous can inherit this land and the government of this land and be in charge. The non-righteous, they have no room in this government. So we have to be prepared for his arrival. We have to be ready by changing ourselves. Some people think my connection to the Imam is I see him in the dream. No, they change the Imam al-Mahdi into dreams, only dreams. Fulan saw him in this dream, Fulan lady, Fulan alim, Fulan man. He's a reality, he's not a dream, he's not fiction. You could see him. You could see him. You don't have to be Marja at taqlid sitting in this city or that city. Maybe Marja at taqlid would never be able to see him. But you are an ordinary person who has a pure heart. Who has a pure heart. When you have a pure heart, this is the best connection to the Imam. This is the best connection to the Prophet. This is the best connection to Allah. Pure heart. Niyatun salima. Pure intention. You can get connected with him. And it does not have to be in the dream. It could be in reality. When we live up to the responsibility, when we raise ourselves to that level, of commitment, you can see the Imam. It's not difficult. It's not impossible. It's not a fairy tale. You can see the Imam. Allah made the Imam as an agent of a blessing and rahmah for all mankind. You don't have to live in that city. Some people think that if I go to Masjid Jalkaran, to Masjid al Sahla, to Masjid al Fulan, I'll see the Imam. And they go on, go on, go on, they don't see. It's not about the space, my friends. It's about here, the heart. Even if you are in Las Vegas, but your heart is clean, you can see the Imam. You can see him anywhere. It's not about the place or the space or the city or the street. It's about the heart. It's about the intention. Once we change the intention, the heart becomes pure and dedicated to Allah to our religion, to our Islam, Imam will come to you. You don't have to go to him. He'll come to you. Allah made all the Imams, the prophets, the apostles, the messengers, servants to the people. They came to serve. They came to guide. So once they see the pure heart, they go to it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين